Hello there, welcome again to Vet Talk. I'm Kay Brown. And I'm Brian Pickering. And uh, around this time of the year, every year, everyone starts to think about mm, summertime, wearing a little less. and oh, uh, bikinis. Thinking, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> and we forget that perhaps we should be thinking about our pet yeah. a little more as well. And we got to thinking, hmm... I wonder if those extra kilos on our pets are having a, a bigger effect on diseases and uh, conditions. So mm-hmm. we thought we'd, we'd check with some experts. And our very first expert joins us on Skype. Pet Talk. On, on Skype. Skype. <laughs> the lovely Nadia Crichton from Pet Insurance Australia. Hi, Nadia. Hi, how are you guys today? Absolutely fine. How are you going to be in your bikini this summer? Oh, I, I think I've got way too many children and way too many years to be busting out a bikini anymore. Okay. Oh, I disagree completely. And you hardly had anything when we had lunch the other day, so definitely not. <laughs> However, what you do have uh, access to is statistics. And what I was very interested in, and you said you might be able to help, is knowing how, how much, I guess, obesity is affecting the number of injuries that our pets are suffering. What have you got for us? Well, I suppose the most concerning thing that we're seeing is the the steady incline of uh, osteoarthritis and cruciate ligament claims. Now, of course, um, as a pet insurer, we do have to set aside the kind of underlining growth that we've had because PIA is, um, you know, one of the top pet insurers. So we, we do have a lot of um, customers. But when you still look at the numbers, it's absolutely, it's, it's terrifying. I mean, there's almost been a 600% increase in osteoarthritis claims in five years. So that that is massive. And um, there's nearly around about 700% with cruciate ligament claims. So when you have a look at these kind of claims and when you t- when you start talking to the vets, um, the main things that we're, we're seeing is that obesity um, is, is a big factor for the, this kind of stuff. That okay. is horrendous. So um, just putting on a small amount of weight on a, a dog or a cat means that they're going to be in pain. Well, it can certainly lead to it. And I think that's the message that we're trying to get out is that by over-treating our pets, and I know it feels lovely, mm. um, you know, to give you, your pets an extra treat. And a lot of the times people don't consider that even when they use treat balls or, um, you know, teeth cleaning devices and all of that kind of stuff that we have to look at the bigger picture and how much extra food are we adding into their daily diets you know look on the back of the food manufacturers check you're feeding the, your dog enough take in all account all those tidbits because all those little things can add up to be a lot and not realizing that when you're doing this throughout your pet's life you are putting them in danger of having some serious you know effects later on in life mm. while you were chatting there uh, little chica um, she loves being involved when we're recording stuff like this. And uh, she's the, the, the least food-obsessed dog that we actually know. I mean, we can be eating and she'll be over on the lounge, you know, watching telly or something like that. Um, but all the other dogs were like, you know, me too, me too, me too. This is a big problem as well, isn't it? People overfeeding their dogs like when, it, when they think, when the dogs are, uh, well, I guess begging, aren't they? Begging for food. They're scavengers, aren't they? Scavengers, yeah. I completely understand. I have a monster Doberman who is absolutely huge and he will quite easily convince anybody in the household that he has not had his breakfast or he has not had his dinner. Um, And with four kids and, you know, a few adults around, they go, oh, somebody must have forgot to feed the dog. And they feed and he will (laughs) quite happily gulp twice the amount of food that you yep. have given. So you, we really have to take that into account. We also do a lot of training with Hudson because yeah. he, he's only, you know, eight, nine months old. So I have also got to take into account, well, how much food has he had mm. during his training session today that we need to take out of his daily intake um, of his, you know, his breakfast and his dinner. We also look at, you know, um, we've ch- recently changed his food over uh, and again, you have to get right on the back of that packet and have exact amount of look on how heavy your dog is, what kind of breed you have and how much you're feeding them mm. because it will change from manufacturer to manufacturer. And it is, it's just the little things that kind of creep up. And then one day you think, oh my goodness, look at the size of my cat. He's massive. As you know, I do a lot of uh, videotaping and recording at the Animal Referral Hospital, uh, particularly with Dr. Sarah Goldsmith, who's the specialist surgeon there and co-owner, and uh, recently went to the Gold Coast for, what was it, Asava, the Mm. Asava conference there, and she did a a talk on osteoarthritis um, generally. Let's have a listen to uh, Dr. Sarah and uh, see what she has to say about osteoarthritis and overweight pets. 
Well, hi, nice to be with Brian. Um, I don't think that pet owners are always particularly good at understanding that their pet is overweight. Um, I think we often uh, have uh, an image in our heads of what our pets should weigh, I guess, and particularly certain breeds tend to be overweight. So I think a big issue is really identifying whether your dog is an ideal weight or not, and your vet can help with that. Um, but I think recognising your animal is overweight is a great start. Um, and then identifying lameness and, you know, maybe your pet isn't quite so active as it used to be. Um, maybe it doesn't want to climb into the car so easily or hop off the bed or whatever it is. Uh, it might be a young dog too. We see osteoarthritis in young dogs as well. So it's not only an old dog disease. Uh, I think just um, being a little more aware of what your animal's activity levels are and whether it's overweight would be a good start because I think um, a lot of arthritis in our pets is underdiagnosed. So that was Dr. Sarah Goldsmith from the Animal Referral Hospital. Now, Nadia, what do you what do you make of that? What do you think of that? She talks some sense. It's certainly, and it really does underline, you know, the fact that we need to take all of this into consideration. And and you know, pet owners need to be a little bit more educated on the effects of obesity has, and talk to your vet because they're experts. You know. Um, Dr. Sarah is so passionate about this subject and all vets are passionate about this, these kind of things. So talk to your vet. There's always an answer mm. um, to your pet's problem. And they don't have to feel like they've um, joined one of those TV um, losing type shows. Definitely not. Nadia oh, biggest Crichton. losers. Yeah. Yes. yes. I wasn't going to name it. <laughs> Nadia Crichton, Pet Insurance Australia, thank you for joining us. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for having me.